I'm Josh Michaelis, Canestream Media, and raising puppies and getting a puppy from birth uh, to tree and coons consistently is my favorite part of hunting with hounds. And so I'm going to take you on a little journey. We're going to outline some of the things that I do for those first zero to four months, which to me, I think are the most important parts of a young dog's life. These are the most important parts of training. This is the base. This is the foundation. Uh, this is what everything gets built upon. Uh, I know it's a cliche, build a strong base, but it is a fact. Uh, these are the most important four months of a puppy's life, I think, especially for training ease in the future and for uh, your own sanity, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, it's not for everybody, so if you're thinking about raising a litter, uh, if you're thinking about picking up that six, seven, eight week old wean puppy and you haven't done it before, I'm hoping that this video gives you some insight as to how I do it. Uh, some people will agree, some people will disagree. I'm trying to raise a weaning coon hound and so I'm going to do some things differently. I'm also very meticulous. Um, probably some of the things I do aren't necessary, but they've worked in the past, uh, so I'm going to keep doing them. Uh, my success rate over the last 8, 10, 12 puppies um, from birth to uh, 12 months old as far as just being a serviceable dog that will treat you some game uh, by itself is 100%. And so I'm going to share with you some of the things that I do to get that puppy started. And we're going to start in one of three. We're going to go with, uh, I've got a 12 month old pup out here right now called Shame that I really like. He's been doing really well, so we're going to kind of outline what I've done with him. And uh, a lot of these pictures and videos and images that you're going to see are of him and me chronicling these first years. So in part one of three, uh, we're going to talk about what I've done with Shame and with my last, I don't know, eight or 10, 12 puppies uh, for that first four months. I think it's real important. Uh, you guys enjoy. Hope this helps. So I'm going from this, as far as a puppy goes, to this is one of, it seems to be, I should say, one of the most daunting tasks in hound sports, in working dog sports in general. To me, a good competition coon hound, uh, one that can win consistently and do the things that we want it to do is probably the toughest type of dog train. Uh, it's a, if not, it's, it's right there very close. Maybe a protection dog, a high level protection dog would be above it. But we ask these dogs to do so much, uh, so much. And so that's why it is important for the first zero to four months to set a rock solid foundation. And for me, building that foundation starts the day they're born. Now, most of my pups are born right here. Most of the people watching this have probably picked up a wean pup somewhere six eight weeks old and so this is not necessarily going to apply to you and yours specifically but i wanted to touch on it uh to me i'll turn this camera around being able to handle the pups is so important uh, those pups need picked up every single day they need held every single day they need human contact every single day so these welcome boxes they're easy to get to they're easy for the kids to come in, grab a puppy or two. And one thing that I do love, you just heard that door go off. I love those slam doors. Uh, those slam doors make it to where not only is there loud noises available around the pup all the time, but it's when their mother comes in a lot of times. So it's feeding time. You know, that, that big loud bang that slam door makes when mom walks in and out. Maybe it doesn't make a difference, but... I have found that it keeps from getting a puppy um, gun shy, backwards, scared of things, as well as all the other things that I do, because that is the one thing that you cannot have uh, with the coonhound pup. So I wanted to touch on that from zero to six weeks old, seven weeks old, eight weeks old, until that puppy finds its new home. They get handled all the time. Uh, the kids are always playing with them. I make sure and pick every single pup up every day hold it for a little bit, put it back down, even before the eyes are open, all that stuff. Um, it is important to know that, you know, 
your female's not testy with you handling the pups and stuff like that. And I've never had that problem yet, but it, it can occur. So keep that in mind. The pups need to be around you. I don't care how old they are. Uh, usually after three or four days, um, I'm picking them up. And I pick them up every day. Me or the kids, usually me. Sometimes all of us. Uh, I pick them up every day before they leave this house. Uh, anybody that buys a pup off of me uh, knows the pups are well adjusted. They travel well already. They do all those things. All because they're used to people. They're used to different situations. They're used to be carried around by different people. And, uh, you know, they're just not scared. And that's a big deal when it comes to Kunal puppies. So, with that, let's take you into picking your Coonhound pup. When it comes to picking a new Coonhound puppy from another breeder, it's not something I do very often. I've done it in the past. Um, had good success. So maybe picking puppies is not always the trap shoot that people think it is. Uh, the main thing is do your research into the litter and the breeder before you ever have to worry about picking a puppy. Uh, if you do that right, you're going to be way better served than to have some method that comes to picking out which puppy you decide you were going to take home with you. But when that opportunity does come, when you do go to that really good breeder and you do pick up that puppy, the main thing you want to do is make sure that it is a puppy that is bold and will come to you and will not be scared or timid or backwards in any way because that is one of the most difficult things like we've touched on before to overcome for a young dog uh, if they are raised the right way uh, normally that's not going to happen and so if you've done your research and you've done all of your due diligence and the breeder has done theirs which i assume they have or you wouldn't be at their house picking up a puppy right now you will be just fine good breeders equal good puppies and that is pretty much all there is to picking one other than that, pick out a male or a female, whichever you prefer. Pick out the one that you think will look the best when it gets older and make sure it's not scared or anything. Easy peasy. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, there is just not a lot to it. Uh, pick a male or a female, whichever one uh, suits you best at the time. Try to pick the best looking one and try to pick the boldest one. You do that. You get it from a reputable breeder uh, out of two good parents, uh, both of which have the traits that you're looking for. You're probably going to be just fine picking your puppy. But what do you do when you get it home? All right, guys, thanks for watching part one, zero to four months. Remember, part two is available for the members. All you have to do, hit that join button. You get rights to exclusive content if you're a silver member or above. Uh, bronze members get the rights to all of our live content that's coming up in 2025. And so, yeah, make sure join. That's what keeps the lights on. That's what keeps the bill, bills paid. And that's what keeps us bringing content like this to you. So thanks again. Enjoy. Back to the show. All right. You got your new puppy. You got it picked out. You got the one you wanted. It is bold. It is pretty. It is bred the way you want it to be bred. It is healthy. Man, you are really excited. And then you get it home. And the hard work starts. <laughs> uh, the first few days, nights, are usually the most miserable with your new puppy. Uh, to me, I think it is important to make sure that puppy's probably crated in with you, um, in the house, in the porch, whatever, because the first thing that puppy's going to do uh, the minute you leave it alone, it start barking and it's going to continue to bark and whine and cry uh, for very long extended periods of time. And it's going to be annoying to not only you, but your family members, your neighbors, uh, whatever situation you might be in. So to me, it's important to keep the puppy crated inside uh, for at least the first couple days. Introduce it to its outside kennel if it's going to be an outside dog um, slowly. Uh, the best way to do that to me is feeding time. Um, usually these puppies are big eaters at that age. Uh, let it run loose in the yard, let it play, uh, get it outside, go to the bathroom, all the things it needs to do, feed it inside uh, that kennel. Uh, it's going to run in there. It's going to 
enjoy eating. Uh, you're going to say kennel. Uh, it's going to go in. It's going to eat. It's going to associate its kennel with its food, and that is going to make a difference. Now, when you transition that puppy, it is going to bark. Uh, when you leave it out that first night, it is going to bark, and there are ways to fix it. I prefer just a little bitty squirt with a garden hose and tell it to hush. It doesn't hurt the pup, especially if it's summertime. Usually, usually they don't get too mad about it. Um, if that puppy knows the tone of your voice, it doesn't take long. These are these are smart dogs. Hounds do not get uh, the credit that they deserve for being smart dogs, especially at a young age. Um, when you tell it to hush and you do it in a gruff voice, you'll even hear me now. Um, something's in the yard, dogs are barking in the kennels, I'll go out, I'll give a hush. And they know just from my tone change and from the command that they need to quit barking. Uh, your puppy is going to pick up on that. It's going to take a while. You're not going to, you know, you can't put a bark collar on the puppy. You can't, uh, you know, correct it really for, for barking other than gently. Um, but it does not take them very long. Two, three days, uh, if you do it right, that puppy is going to be quiet in the kennel until it sees you outside. And my advice from then on out is when you walk outside, you're in the yard for a little bit. I don't care whether it's, you know, five minutes or two hours. Just open that crate up, open that kennel up, let that puppy go. All right. Let him learn, let him explore. And for those first two, three weeks at that at your house, uh, either in the kennel or in the house, it is very important for you to keep handling that puppy. Um, you want it in your hands every day for at least a little bit. You want it running loose every day for just a little bit. And then you're gonna continue on, you're gonna hit that three month range and that puppy's getting ready to transition into learning to be in hauled in the dog box, which is very, very important to me. Um, at 10 to 12 weeks, um, they're taking their first dog box ride, whether it be on the four wheeler, in the truck or whatever. And it is very important uh, to make those shorts, those trips short, very short, um, across the road. And what I like to do is not let it run loose in the yard first if I'm going to put it in the dog box and take it somewhere. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do when I call that puppy the very first time is I'm going to pick it up in its kennel. Um, I'm holding it up here. It's licking my face. It's all excited. It's happy. Put it in the dog box, shut the door, immediately make the shortest trip that you can make. Um, preferably to some woods uh, with water. So luckily I'm in a situation where I can go right across the road. Uh, I go right across the road, a quarter mile, I get out, the puppy's freaked out because it's in the dog box. I pick it up immediately, it's at my face again. I'm petting it, good boy, good girl. Um, put it on the ground, looky here. It's a whole new world for that pup. Uh, that pup's gonna enjoy running, it's gonna enjoy doing all those things, and it's gonna enjoy enjoy exploring new things. Take it, walk it. These are the only times between, you know, 10 weeks old, when I first show it the dog box, 10 to 12 weeks, first show it the dog box to the first time I start taking it out at night, coon hunting with some older dogs. Um, this is the only time I walk a pup. This is the only time that I will walk a pup through the woods. I'll never do it again, other than for this four to six weeks, never. Um, I think that continuously walking a pup uh, that doesn't want to go hunting is not going to teach it to go hunt. Okay, it's just going to teach it to follow you. And so uh, they do need it uh, for the first, you know, four to six weeks that you take them out there. Uh, from you figure eight to ten weeks old, twelve weeks old, up to four months old, which is normally, you know, right at four months, between four and five months is when I start carrying them to the woods at night to an so, in conclusion, time with the pup, uh, when it's in the dog box and it's introduced to the dog box and it's introduced to the woods, it's fun. Uh, there's, there's no anything bad. Can, you want to prevent anything bad happening to that pup. Everything should be fun. Everything should be uh, something that the pup's going to look forward to. And then do that. Just keep doing that uh, for those few weeks until it is ready to get in the dog box and go at night. Like I said, I don't like to walk the pups uh, when I first start taking them hunting. Uh, I drive to a lot of my trees, so I will take that pup, put it back in the dog box. I will drive to the tree, and I'm not walking it to another dog's tree, especially if I plan on giving that dog a raccoon. 
Uh, I think that's another terrible thing to do with a young dog. Um, a lot of people do it. A lot of people have some, some success, but to me, it just teaches them that they can follow me to a tree and they can get some reward and they can see cool things. And I don't want that. Uh, under no circumstances do I want a dog following me to a tree. So it starts young. Uh, so yeah, from, you know, early age, you know, get it used to its kennel, be around it every day and start taking those short excursions, you know, two, three, four times a week if you can, um, one, two, three hours and just walk them around the woods, get them used to crossing water, creeks, ditches, things like that. And you will be surprised at how well that pup progresses as we transfer into, you know, that four month old, five month old range and putting it in the dog box, driving it a little farther and getting it turned loose in the dark. So that's pretty much it from zero to four months. Um, that is what I like to do. It won't be long. We'll have part two. That is four months to eight months. So that is when that puppy first starts hitting the woods uh, with coon hunting on its mind. Uh, part three will be eight months to 12 months. And that is when that puppy really starts hunting by itself, being turned loose by itself, and that transition that it makes from being a puppy to a consistent coon dog. And my goal is to have that done in a year. Uh, that is not always the case, but most times uh, at 12 months old, those pups are, are getting good at treeing coons by themselves. So um, you've seen all these pictures, all these videos. Most of these are shame. Um, I will do a quick montage here of shame from birth to four months old. And then as we pick up part two, part three, you'll see shame a lot from four months to eight months, eight months to 12 months. So Hope you guys enjoyed it. That's how I raise my puppies from birth to four months old. Uh, part two, like I said, four months to eight months. Part three, eight months to 12 months. You guys stay tuned. You got any questions, uh, make sure to leave a comment, uh, leave a like. That helps with the YouTube, YouTube algorithm and helps us get spread around. So uh, yeah, take a look. Uh, like I said, there's, there's more than one way to do this. I'm just showing you my way and so far so good. Uh, my success rate is really high, and I think this program works for just about every hound pup as far as just getting it from that weaned puppy or that born puppy uh, to a year old and running and treeing its own raccoons on a consistent basis. So, hope you enjoy. Make sure to thank the sponsors, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. You guys want more content like this? You want to watch uh, part two of training your puppy? That is a four to eight month old, my eight month old. Fuck! Damn it! Fucking glasses on. Yeah, I'm starting to sleep.